Hey guys, GhostXB here. I just want to do an update video on the MPC Studio MK2 script that I made for FL Studio. I apologize for the long wait. I know it's been like four months, if I'm being perfectly honest. I completed this version of the script like a month ago. I, it just took me a while to actually get the motivation to do the video and upload the update. Uh, I do read your comments, so if you've commented on the previous video saying that you appreciate what I've done or that you were waiting for an update, uh, I do appreciate those comments. Those comments do motivate me to get my button gear to get these updates out. So anyways, uh, without further ado, let's go over some of the updated features. So probably the first one and the, the most important one is compatibility with FL Studio 2024. Now, if you've updated to the newest version, you may have noticed that the pads, when you hit them, they might not light up. So with the new update, it broke one of the, it broke the way that I scripted this feature. So I had to update it to make it work. So now the patch should light up in the new version of FL Studio. Another updated feature is the way that the knob is implemented. So if you remember in the previous version, if I say hit zoom, hitting the zoom button would change the way that the knob uh, works. So if I select the track and zoom you can see that it zooms but I would have to remember to turn this off if I wanted to say change it over to program select so that was like really annoying to have to deal with so I changed it so that you can only toggle one thing at a time so uh, if you hit zoom program select track select browse only one thing will be active at a time so that's uh, that's just a quality of life update. Uh, the only exception is if you hit shift 16 levels, if you recall from the previous update, that would change it into notes editing mode. Uh, you would have to manually turn this off if you want to go to like a different uh, mode. Uh, that kind of made sense to the way to my workflow. I don't know if uh, if that makes sense to you. So yeah, if this if the way this is implemented makes sense to you, uh, maybe just leave a comment, let me know. Uh, just give me some feedback. And another updated feature is the FPC copy. So if I go to FPC here, and if I hit shift copy, it will copy the colors and notes on the FPC. So this was in the previous version. However, uh, occasionally it would cause a bug and this feature would break and you would have to go to view script output and hit reload script to get it to work again. So I did fix that. This should be a much more reliable feature. I just changed the way that it was implemented. Another update is uh, if you recall from a previous version, uh, if FPC pad bank A and B in the plugin would also copy to pad bank A and B here in F the MPC, However, pad banks C and D were not used. So in this new version, uh, pad bank C is a preset or drum layout that I got from a channel called The Quest for Groove. It's just a, it's a finger drumming uh, tutorial channel. Uh, if you want to learn how to do some finger drumming, I would recommend it. That's, uh, that's basically where I got this layout. So you got the double drums, the double kick, the double snares. Uh, I found it a pretty useful uh, finger drumming layout. Uh, pad bank D is currently not really used. So if there was like a drum layout that you wanted to load every time without having to uh, say load an FPC uh, preset, you just go to options, MIDI settings, and then go to make sure the MPC Studio MK2 public's loaded, hit this wrench icon here, and then go to edit script. This will load this script. If you scroll down until you find a section here. So here's the, the default FPC, then there's FPC B, and then there's FPC C and D. So what this is laid out is that it goes from zero to 15 to represent all the 16 pads. It starts from zero. And then the next three letters are the RGB value. So this, for example, the first one is zero red, 40 green, zero blue and you can set that for each of the pads and there's fpc c and fpc d and to change the notes if you scroll down further you'll see another list here there's a uh, one for fpc default fpc b 
and then you can change FPCC and D. And this is the list of notes that start from the first pad all the way to the last pad. And then you just hit file and save. And that's if there's like a, a drum layer or setting that you wanted to load every single time without having to load an FPC like preset. Um, However, depending on the workflow, maybe just creating an FPC preset and hitting the shift copy, uh, maybe that will be more suitable to your workflow. I just thought I'd mention that if you to give you some options. So the next thing that I update is that I implemented some features for the touch strip. So if I hit 16 levels to go into notes mode, I'm currently in, let's select an instrument. I'm currently in uh, major mode. Uh, someone did mention in a previous that they wish that they could use this as like a mod wheel. However, you actually can. Uh, this is basically just set to as a basic mod wheel. So let's see if I move this cutoff wheel and then I go to tools, last tweet, link controller. Then I move the mod wheel. You can see that I currently have it set to the cutoff. If I hit touch strip again, uh, this will light up and now it's currently set to like uh, notes level. So hitting this will change the max level of the current note. So currently it's at full. It's half. You can use this to set the, the sensitivity of the pad if you want it quieter or louder. So this only changes like the max velocity, but everything else is relative. So for example, if I currently have it set to half, so I hit this pad pretty hard, it's still only gonna play at half velocity. However, it still preserves dynamics. I thought that would be a useful way to implement this feature. If you hit it again, it'll turn red. And this I use for chord variations, which I'll get into later. And then we're back into the default mod wheel-esque. One thing I should mention is there is currently a bug. So if I go to the levels mode, this will change the levels, but it won't change the mod wheel. However, if I bottom out uh, the touch strip while in a different mode, it will change the mod wheel. It will bottom out the mod wheel setting as well. So if I turn this back up, you see there's no sound because I had the mod wheel set to the, to the, the cutoff. So I have to go back to the default touch strip setting to turn back the cutoff. So that's just something to keep in mind. I did try to figure, I don't know why this bug is currently happening. Hopefully I can figure it out, but uh, that's just something to look out for. So moving on to the next updated feature, I expanded on the chord features as well as the scales. So if you recall from a previous version, hitting 16 levels will change between the three different modes. So by default, it'll be in like FPC mode. If you hit again, it'll be in chromatic mode. And then you hit again, this will be uh, scale mode. And currently chord mode will only work in the scale mode. And by default, you can see that we're currently in major. Um, so there's like quite a bit of modes and scales to go through and it can be pretty easy to lose track. Uh, unfortunately, I did not get around to implementing the screen. This would have been a pretty useful feature for that. I know that X producer B has released some documentation uh, for the screen. I did look at it and if I'm being honest, it looked like a pain in the ass to implement. So I haven't really gotten around to doing that. Uh, I may add this in a future update. Uh, but for now, if you go to view and script output, this will tell you the current scale that you're in. So if I hit clear output, and if I hit shift 16 levels, this will bring me into notes editing mode. So this will allow me to change scales and chord voicings, etc. And if you recall from a previous version, uh, this events left and right allows you to scroll through the modes. So currently I'm in major, you hit it and go into Dorian mode. Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian, and then back into major. Uh, one thing I added is on the other side here where it says start and end. 
these two will scale, go through the different scales. So I've now implemented new scales. So if I hit right, uh, it will bring me into the minor scale. Now, going back to the major, I could go to the minor scale just by hitting left twice. So now there's basically a duplicate of this mode. So that might seem redundant. However, uh, seeing as how the major modes are probably the most commonly used modes, I figured it would be a useful feature to allow you to go between different scales. So let's say I go to Mixolydian mode and then back to major and then I hit main to turn on chords. Let me turn this down a little bit. And then I can use this to switch quickly switch to Mixolydian if I want to do like some sort of modal interchange. So now let's go through all the different scales. Uh, so the default one is major. Then we have the minor scale. Then we have the melodic minor, harmonic minor, pentatonic scale, minor pentatonic, blues scale, flamenco, gypsy, Hungarian gypsy, Persian scale, major bebop, and then we're back into major. So all of these scales I just copied from the the scales that are available on the original MPC software. I thought I'd just copy that over here to FL Studio to give you back those options. And one cool thing is, let's see if I go to melodic minor, I now have, let me clear the output here. I now have all the modes of the melodic minor. So Dorian flat two, Lydian augmented, Lydian dominant, Mixolydian flat six, one of my personal favorites, Locrian natural, two mode, I just noticed a typo. I'll fix that by the time this uh, video comes up. Super Locrian, back to melodic minor. And then we have all the modes of harmonic minor and you can do that with each scale. So lots of uh, potential options to play around with. So moving on to the updated chord features. If you recall from the previous version, hitting main will turn off or on chord mode. By default, we'll just have some basic triads. And if we call for a piece version, hitting or turning this knob will change the voicing. One thing that I update is that if you were holding the pa pad and you turn the knob, in the previous version, it would like lose like sight of the notes that were currently on and you would basically have a note that was turned on forever that you'd have to manually turn off by clicking on it. That was annoying. So in this update version, it does keep track of that. So you can hold a pad and it'll re-trigger the code e chord each time you turn the knob. And if you also recall, hitting the minus or plus will add or remove extensions. So I'm gonna add a seventh. Then we have the ninth and then the eleventh. Let's go back to a seventh. And the chord voicing also works with uh, with this feature. One thing that I did add, so I'm just gonna go back to triads. If you hit the locate button, you see it light up. This will turn on an octate of the root so you can basically play block chords. Another thing this does is it preserves the root note. So here I have a C major with a C in the octave. If I go up, it preserves the root. So if I turn this off, we basically just have a triad in the up an octave, but if I hit this, this will preserve the root of the, the chord. Uh, that's a useful thing. Another thing is, if you recall I mentioned earlier, the third mode of the touch strip when it turns red, this will give you chord alterations. So if, you, uh, if I hit this uh, touch strip, you can see that it lights up. And this will give you like chord alterations that I can do to each chord. So, oh yeah, <laughs> I bottomed out the, uh, the cutoff. So I try, try not to like go all the way down there. So the first one is basically a sus two chord. That just lowers the second. Then we got a sus four chord that raises the second. 
Then we got a diminished chord, which will lower the, the third degree. And then we have an augmented chord, which will raise the third degree. Then we have a secondary dominant. Very useful for jazzy type stuff. And then we have the uh, tritone substitution, a little more spicy version of that. And then we have the backdoor dominant. Wait, sorry. This is the backdoor dominant. And then finally, we just have a dominant version of the current chord. So one cool thing about these chord alterations is if I say play secondary dominant, the chord voicing also applies. It also applies to the chord alterations. And if I go say Dorian, I'm currently in block chords mode, you can do some cool churchy stuff with a secondary dominance. Just a demonstration of some of the cool things you can do with that. So I'm back into FPC mode to demonstrate another feature that I added. So in the previous version, Tune didn't do anything, but now it does. So if I hit Tune, the last pad that I hit, if I turn a knob, it'll change. What note it plays by a semitone. I found this feature to be fairly useful for to quickly change uh, what you're playing. So if, if you're using a drum program, like here I've got BD Deep, uh, basically anything like Superior Drummer, Addictive Drums, uh, Steven Slate Drums, they all have like a lot of different drums that are not represented by all 16 pads and they might not all be com compatible with each other. So if I just wanted to quickly change what this does. I can quickly do that while tune is turned on. And this will change the last pad that he hit. So I can turn back that back off. So I thought that was a useful feature if you're planning on using this for like various drum programs. So those are all the updated features. Um, if there's going to be an update, it probably won't be for a while because if we look at the script, I don't know if any of you guys are Python scripters, but this is absolutely terrible. <laughs> I was basically learning Python as I was uh, doing the script. So I did everything in a single file. This is like kind of hard to read even while I was like trying to update it, like trying to decipher my own script was kind of a pain. So now that I'm a little bit more proficient with Python, I'll probably just do it from scratch to make it more legible, more easier to debug. And features that I might be interested in exploring is to dive even deeper into the whole chord scale thing. I find that a lot of fun to do and also just fun to like explore different possibilities. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know if you have any suggestions for features or feedback. Um, I'm not really interested in doing the whole uh, pattern sequencer thing. Uh, you may know another YouTuber by X Producer B. He already has a script. There's like a paid version of the script that has like a pretty cool pad sequencer thing, and he also has the screen working. But like, I feel like the overall des design philosophy between this script and his script is a little different. So it. I feel like they accomplish two different things depending on your workflow. Uh, one thing that I'm probably going to do is change the name of the script. Currently it's just called MPC Studio MK2. I might just add like an XB at the end to differentiate it from the other script. So if you wanted to load different scripts, you can just quickly uh, load one or the other depending on what you're trying to do at the moment. So just something to keep in mind. But anyways, yeah, hope you guys enjoy this updated script. Thank you for watching.